Now let's take a look at how this program is implemented in vBuilder. As you can see, uh, we've got a, a small program here that consists of a main program called Scale Functions. That is simply a test program that we've written to, to exercise the program that uh, does the real work. The, we've got a program called Scale Iface or scale interface here, which is what interfaces with the scale. You can see um, under the solution here that scale interface actually consists of four linked subroutines. Um, and, it, and it's going to demonstrate uh, linking subroutines and also uh, developing a uh, initialization routine for the purpose of minimizing the amount of data that's got to be passed back and forth in, in subroutines or into subroutines um, and speeding up the application. Um, the main program, which is what I've got here right now, you can see that we start off, we initialize our state machine, and then we do call this scale. Uh, I face init, which all, the main purpose of this of this function, I will open it up here, is simply to pass the um, pass by reference variables into the subroutine. Once it is in the subroutine object, it doesn't have to be passed again. We've passed it in, and you'll notice that any other calls that we've got to uh, scale interface do, do not involve passing data. It already has the uh, data references that are necessary. So we've got the, the pass list and the other thing that it does it is it initializes the state machine for the subroutines. Getting back to the main program, you'll see that what it does is it's, it's actually just two steps or two states in, in step one or state one uh, it is waiting for a um, switch to be flipped and the there's five possibilities here the the send zero tear send hold read net weight read gross weight and read tear weight um, the messages that are required by the scale in order to do these functions are, are very simple they involve um, one character and a uh, line feed. So uh, the characters, um, the ASCII equivalents for them are listed here in these copy functions. So if we um, flip the zero tear uh, switch, which is the first switch, you'll see that we copy the value 90 into the message to send, which is a temporary placeholder. Uh, that happens to be an ASCII capital Z. And then, uh, regardless of which one is selected, we go to step two, which was where all the communications actually occurs. So, normally when we're sitting here, nothing's been flipped. We're simply going to be going around in a loop. We'll back out of a little bit here. Yeah, didn't mean to do that. And we'll just be going around this loop where we're waiting for a switch to be flipped. Once it's flipped, we've selected the message and we go down to the second step, which is where we call scale interface. So we're in step two now. Scale interface is, is called until we're done with step two, until we've done the communications. You'll notice uh, we call the subroutines. We do, do not pass any data into it because it's already got the references. Once, it, once the message is, uh, communications is complete, which we, means we have sent a message and we have received a response, we will get a uh, flag that says message complete. That's one of the pieces of data that we pass the references on. And then we get another piece of data that says, okay, well, is there weight available? So if we have um, 
received response message and wait is available, then we will uh, we do a copy here simply to um, make it visible on our screen here for, de for demonstration purposes. We, we'll see what the, the weight is that we've read, if we're doing weight read, and what units they are. If it's not a, uh, a uh, weight read, which is something that would happen if you are doing a, a zero tear, uh, then we've got a message is complete and weight is not available in which case we simply go back uh, to wait for the next switch. Uh, when we do get a weight reading, we also, you can see we copy a one into M step here too. We go back and wait for the next operation. Let's take a look at scale interface because that is where the, the main work of this program is done. You can see it starts off in step one. We do implement a state machine here as we do with almost all of our programming and we check to see, okay, is this a, are we being passed uh, a message that is viable? So we check here to see whether it is any of the available messages. And you can see over in the note here, um, if, it's a, if it's a 90, that's ASCII for a Z, that's okay. If it's a 72, that's ASCII for an H, and so on down the line. So if we match any of the uh, legal messages, then we go over and we copy uh, our message into a transmit array. Uh, this one happens to only be two characters long, so we, we copy the character, whatever it is, like if it's a, it's a zero, we copy the 90 into the transmit array index zero, and we copy a 10, which is a line feed, into um, array position one, and we set it up for two characters to send. Um, after we do that, we set up uh, both our transmit and receive. We set it up to receive because we know we got a message coming back, and we set it up so that we put the data into an array called receive array. We select that we want to know how many uh, bytes or characters we've received, so that number will go into a tag called num received, and we set it up so that uh, it'll start receiving after a, a break of 10 milliseconds, and then there we identify a flag called uh, receive available. We, when that when that is set to a one, we have got an indication that we've got a message back there. But right after that, we tell it, okay, send the array that we just buffered up here. We set it up uh, for the next step. Uh, we sent an indication back to the main program that uh, we, we did send the message or we're in the process of sending the message and we start a timer. And in this subroutine after every step we return to the main program. So we keep going to the subroutine, through the loop, and then on back. Step two, we wait for the 10 milliseconds. We're simply giving the receive time to, uh, to clear out and receive the next uh, message. Then we go to step three. Step three, we check to see if our transmit is done. If it is, we go to step four. In step four, we wait until we've got a receive available um, bit set. Once it is, um, these two copies um, simply uh, allow us in debug mode to um, see what the message is. We, each byte of the message, they uh, normally once you are done, you would you would take those out of here. They, they don't they don't actually do anything useful, but they're they're good for debug purposes. And then uh, we've got the received message. We check to see okay. What type of message did we send? If it's one that uh, involves a scale reading, which are the, the 78, the 71, and the 84 do, then we go over and we check to, to see whether the message is proper and we decode the data. Uh, the response message from this scale starts with a plus sign, so we check for that. That plus is an a ASCII 43. If it, uh, the message starts with a 43, 
uh, then we go in and we uh, have some uh, linked subroutines that will go grab the uh, the weight. It'll it'll read back and decode the ASCII reading for the weight, and then if that checks out, we have a similar um, similar subroutine that goes back out and checks to see okay for what is the what are the units um, units could be in this case either kilograms or pounds, and if that's all okay, we we write that data back out so it's available to the um, to the main program. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of the details of the um, the decoding the weight and the units and so forth. It is here. You can take a look at it. It's posted on the website. Uh, but it goes through and it does an ASCII decode. It goes into a loop. And, and goes through each character, and if everything is proper, it builds the um, the data response. Okay, we can show this. Um, we'll program it, and I'll show it to you running here. If we come down and we take a look at um, down here on this block here, we should be getting our data back. I'm going to put a weight on the scale so we should get a reading and then I'm going to tell it to uh, do a weight read um, so I guess I should start the program I'll tell it to do a weight read and you'll see it's reading back 0.36 and the units, um, I've got them listed here in the note. If it's a one here, weight units is a one. That's kilograms. If it had been a two, it would have been pounds. If I put uh, some more weight on, I'm going to put quite a bit more weight on right now. Do another read. We'll get a different number.